looking at the market today it comes out absolutely red but i have to tell you this is definitely a misreading of what happened today if we go back to yesterday we talked about the massive trend on the nq the nasdaq futures what really matters on the market and then as you zoom in here we need to talk about what's happening here in a deeper level so we actually had the push up to our key range the target we've had for the past three to four weeks give or take of 13.5 13.6 boom you hit it and what happens you come back down but where do you test the top of the trend and some other key levels we're going to mention here in the video now i'm going to tell you exactly what i see happening over the next few days and the trades that i am in as well all i ask you to do is consider liking and subscribing i'm posting these videos every single day so you know exactly what's happening i told you exactly what i was trading yesterday and we're going to go over those trades specifically here first as well now Going into today, what were we looking at? So yesterday we had Google and we had Apple. Starting the day off, I closed my Googles. They were up about 40%. I had my Apples. I ended up closing another half of those as well at roughly $290 to $3. They were up almost 100% from yesterday. Again, we mentioned those for the past two days as well to you. We're getting that good movement. We're getting exactly what we want. This was the opportunity and today, again, in my opinion, was another opportunity. We have to go down to the five minute chart and show you some of this intraday price action. Now, I wanna highlight, we had that little wedge yesterday. I told you, I didn't think it was gonna matter. We popped right through it anyways. Now, we're gonna talk about key levels we're sitting at right now. So NASDAQ has been outperforming, in my opinion, the ES. So basically QQQ is doing better than the SPY. So what I'm looking at in particular is a lot of tech stocks. However, I have switched over my thesis to a little bit more of a conservative play, which I'm going to go to in later on this video as well. It's probably my favorite stock play right now. Now, as you're looking at this, you actually broke below your key high that you had here. This was your previous high that you had and you came down a little bit deeper, but I believe you were trying to touch this overall trend line down here. And that's where you ended up coming down to. Now, something worth mentioning, you're still holding above 13.3, and then as we go over to ES, which again, we need to highlight here as well, is you end up coming into that supply up here as well. There was one right here, we mentioned it in Discord, um, and then you came down directly to that $4,200 level, ending the day still in that supply, which your main support is basically be 420 down to 442 flat. The main part here that I like the most on ES and SPY is that you never broke back below 4,200. Now we're gonna be looking at the overall flow of options and what happened with Bookmap, but we're gonna do it here in a second as well. But I was trying to show you what I'm looking at in particular. Now NQ is gonna be the end all be all for me. It's what I use primarily for everything when I'm looking at uh, a, a move to the upside or move to the downside. I'm always looking at NQ. It's my bread and butter. It's my baby. Now, as far as NQ, what do we always expect when we have a target, right? I, I say this over and over. And I said at the end of the video yesterday, I said, as you get into this range, you need to be careful. You have to slow down on your positions, right? So I'm just going to draw this for you very quick. So let's say this is my target. And then this is my support, or this is our zone in which we're trending, right? When we're looking at this, we are always anticipating let me use this so you can see a little bit more clearly that you're gonna push, 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 push. We're aiming to get into that zone, right? You're aiming to get that push. That's what we want. But when we get there, we expect a rejection. Why? Because this is you usually where sellers step back in is at key resistances. So you expect to get a little bit of a dip and then hopefully it bounce back up. That's what you most likely want and to hopefully long that retest if you didn't get in on the rejection if you still think you're bullish. Right now, I still think we're bullish, right? Now, I wanna highlight here though. You're gonna say, well, Tyler, where's our support here? Now, you're still holding key levels, highs you had back here. You didn't even get a retest of you know, 13.1, which is the major level, but you're still holding very well. So I still love what's happening here on NQ, and I'm extremely, extremely bullish. I believe you are just reacting and pushing back down. Earlier today in Discord, I drew this out. While you were still up here at these highs when you were bear flagging earlier, I still had this overall coming back down, most likely filling the gap. You came back a little bit deeper, but you're looking better on the after hours right now, which really doesn't matter, but I still want to highlight on the after hours you are pushing back up. You came down, filled the gap, and you're still looking good. You're still holding that 4, 420 range, and you're still trying to push back up. Again, you are continuing right now. It's always healthy to get a pullback. For instance, we're going to go to ES. This is S&P futures, SPY futures, the one that's going roughly 24-7, right? 
except on you know Friday after close and Saturday comes back open on Sunday nights. When you come to the four hour, this is what I was highlighting to everyone when we were looking here. You're getting these pullbacks, people. It's okay to have pullbacks. It's okay. Why? Because it usually leads to our continuation, right? You continue to see them. You're continuing, continuing to see pullbacks across the board. When bears really step in, you know, right? You know when bears step in. This is not the case. This is not the time to start panicking yet. You're still holding previous highs. We're going to go over this a little bit more here. You can see you're still holding that key level 4,200. So you have to remain bullish here. And you have to even test it on ES, the key level of 4,300, which is something I will definitely be looking forward to as well. It's a NASDAQ. You can see this as well. Look, you're holding these trends. You're making, you're, you're, you're getting the consolidation towards that downside. We got it here. This is why I mentioned it yesterday. And guess what happened? Boom. You shoot back up. This is what we want to see. This is what we love to see. These are the opportunities for us. When you get these dips, you need to stop looking at these dips as necessarily a bears taking back over if buyers are showing up. So when you come back down at the end of the day, you saw buyers stepping up. Another thing that I posted here on Twitter, I was letting everyone know, if you don't follow me on Twitter, I recommend doing it just so you can see updates. On the day, yeah, this actually ended up changing. I posted it in Discord as well. We're gonna post it right here, pull it up. You can see, let me zoom in just a little bit. This is your volume on the day on SPY. You were actually below your 30 day average of 69 million. You came at 57 million. And guess what? The average 30 day is already pretty low. So you're actually getting descending volume on the day and what happens and you're dipping, but sellers never really take control. When sellers were taking control, this is what you were seeing. Now, is it possible that you could push down tomorrow? I'm never going to tell you it's not possible. However, for me, I am still a bull on the market, and I still am looking for that upside movement because I like where we're at, and I just continue to remain bullish here. I've posted a lot of stocks I liked yesterday, and most of them opened up very, very strong. Now, again, I was pretty quick to warn you. When you get to a key level, when you get to a resistance, that's not the time to long, right? So when you're getting to 13.5, 13.6, the area we've been targeting for, again, three to four weeks, this is not the time to go long. You do not want to go long at the resistance. Where do you want to go long at? You want to go long when you're retesting it before you get there. That's where you're looking. Or when you're making higher lows and you're breaking out here, that's where you want to go long, right? This is what you're looking for. Or today, when you're getting the opportunity, Today was a massive opportunity for me personally. I continue to read long to get back into positions after profiting off of this as well. And you may think, well, Tyler, and especially looking at some of those positions, my NVIDIA position, for instance, I started getting in around $2. And guess what? Those contracts are down to about, they got as low as 145. I ended up adding more. However, those are still kind of down right now. I'm okay being down in the short term if I still see a longer move to the upside, right? Now we've already gone over long term. I still think downside is going to come, but I don't want to go into that yet. We're going to cover that tomorrow. We'll get into the market. I want to go over exactly what I'm seeing and exactly what I'm looking at. Now, VIX, I want to point this out as well. I have a lot of people talking about this. People are saying VIX is moving up. It's looking real dangerous. It's looking like it's going to hurt us. Now, when we look at VIX, I want to go to the four hour chart. Always zoom out people. You are still in a massive downward channel and you barely made it. You didn't even make it to the median level of this channel, just to highlight. And you're still not really moving, people. This is easily setting up for another drop, okay? Just my personal opinion. Be careful. Do whatever you got to do. But for me personally, I just don't see it, okay? I still see VIX coming down lower. DXY, what's going on here with the dollar? The dollar, you've been getting absolutely slaughtered, okay? I still think dollar will eventually bounce, but you still look very weak. Everything's pointing down to a weak overall scenario on the market when it comes to some of these indicators that are pushing you down. I still think they all look very weak, and I still think futures have potential upside. Going over to J and K, what's going on here? I was very quick to remind Discord what was happening here on J and K, one of the leading indicators of a risk on environment, indicating that hedge funds are putting risk in the market, betting on tech, betting on some of the riskier assets. And guess what? This has been one of the best indicators of point when we're going to the upside. Where did you retrace to? Your previous highs, people. Your previous highs basically since the end of July. It's just again and again playing out and playing out and playing out and we're getting very close to that target on j and k as well which were the highs that we saw back in may 
So I still think upside is here. I still think there's no reason to panic. I still love a lot of the positions. We're going to go over those here in a second. But looking at these indicators, I still think upside is coming until something bad uh, just comes thrown at us in the market. And we just don't have any bad news right now. So am I saying put your full account onto longs? That is not what I'm saying. You need to do your own uh, risk management. You need to do your own research. I'm, I'm not giving you financial advice. But looking at the market, I still see strength. Okay, I still see us bouncing at key levels. I still see the strength. Now, in Q, I will say... This was a pretty decent dip, I will say. This is a pretty sizable dip you had. Almost 300, eh, 200, give or take points from highs, 250 roughly down to those lows, okay? You did get a decent drop. However, considering when we start looking at some of these stocks, you're going to see the dip from some of these stocks does not correlate to the dip from NASDAQ. This would have brought a lot more pain a few weeks back. That's all I got to say about that. So what we're going to do is go over to stocks that I'm liking and stocks that I'm looking at going into the end of this week and going into next week. First up is going to be Target. Uh, this is just my favorite play overall, and I want to knock this one out first. I'm going to go to the four hour. So what I'm going to do is zoom out very quickly for you. Now, a key range I want to mention to you that we're going to see over here is this 168 level. This is a massive range that was flipped. Boom. Massive range flipped. Second being right here. Now, when we come back over, Look at where you are holding. We're going to go to the 15-minute real quick to make it a little bit more clear and so you can see some more of that price action. Look at how you're holding on previous highs in that massive zone. This is what we want to see. You're getting not one, not two, but three to four tests of this trend, and you're holding, people. That's what we want to see. This is what we call an opportunity. And it's hard to draw the higher lows just because you're or the lower highs that you are forming. You are forming lower highs. That's a bearish overall consensus here. However, I think you're wedging and I think you want to get the breakout to the upside. So Target, I absolutely love these. I think there's massive upside. And also the ETF XLP, I love where it's at as well. Very bullish on XLP. So I do like TGT, Target. I have the 190s, I believe, for September 16th is the day I have those four. Second up, I'm going to go over NVIDIA, another trade that I do have right now. I'm going to go over the trades I have, and then so you can do whatever you want after that. I have NVIDIA. Key level is down here, 178.66, and you held it to a T. So where did I start adding? First, I want to highlight on the monthly. I started adding right here. This is my first position around $2.17, and like $2.20, and then I added again down here at $1 and I believe 45 cents. So those did drop in value, but I plan on holding those. And those are for next week. So they're a little bit riskier, but I think Nvidia has value here. I think we dumped on, it was bad news, but I think Nvidia is gonna rally back, especially looking at AMD. AMD in comparison is doing extremely well. You're just seeing that dip and you're like, well, it took the same dip. It did not take the same dip because AMD is very much so back above the key level almost back to some of these highs that we're back at 110. You know, you're not back at, you know, all time highs or anything like that, but you're getting back into very bullish territory as well. So I do love Nvidia. I think it has a lot of room to go. And I think you're definitely just getting started. Upside here, 192, all the way up to about 196. That's where I want to see us go. And I definitely see that happening here in the near term future. I love Nvidia. We, I've already gone over the semiconductor ETF yesterday, so I don't want to spend too much time here. I'm going to go over Tesla really quick. I have no positions here, but I know a lot of people here are interested. Now, Tesla, I believe, is gearing up for a pretty decent move. It was announced as well that Elon was selling some stock. He was selling some shares in order to, I guess, finance the opportunity when he has to come to Twitter and things like that. So he has the cash available. He also mentioned he'd be buying back Tesla stock if he does not have to buy Twitter. So that was a lot of the downside that we were seeing during this time. Now, today, it's worth mentioning with a three, two, 250, 300 point drop on NASDAQ, what happened? You dropped from 890 down to 860. I know you're thinking, Tyler, it's a 30 point drop. However, on Tesla, I think we can all assume and look at this, it's not that big of a drop compared to some of the days that you are getting, even with the downside on the market. And you're still holding this key level we've been watching. You get back over about 875, 874. I believe you're going to run closer towards 903. If you get above 903, 905, in my opinion, that's when you're looking more bullish and I'd be targeting 940 and a breakout towards 1000. You also are in this clear channel as well. So I do want to highlight that just so you can see as well. So you are channeling down. It's a 
pretty rough channel to draw. I have to spread it out pretty nice, but it does still look strong nonetheless as long as you're holding this 860 to 850 region. We still like Tesla. If it gets below 850, then I think you have to start assuming some more downside. Last but not least, I'm going to go over Apple. Now, Apple, I still think is giving you just an, an awesome opportunity here. If I'm looking at Apple's chart, you're trying to hold previous highs from yesterday as well. And actually, it's not the previous highs because you did have this at the end of the day, that late, late day push, but those key levels right here as well, around 168.6, you're trying to hold that there. Now, Again, if you come down, you're actually gonna bring that, it should be all the way down to right here. But you can see these Wix buyers holding this up as well here on the 15 minute. You love to see that and you see how it's kind of rounding off there. I like Apple, it's one of the safer plays and I definitely think there's upside potential here as well. So Apple, Tesla look really good. I will say that they're on massive supports. NVIDIA, Target are some of my favorite plays on the market and I would definitely be keeping your eye out on those. Those are my favorite ones right now. I also want to mention Microsoft. So yesterday I mentioned Microsoft and I like it a lot. I still do. I still do. We have some longer term positions here. I have the 300, I believe for the 16th. I need to look and see exactly where they are at. I don't like going deeper, like two months out right now. I just like the short. If I'm going for swings, I like just a month out. That's just me personally right now. Now looking at Microsoft, you're still holding this bottom here. You're holding it very nicely. If you start to lose this, then I'd be a little bit concerned. But I also mentioned on Twitter, they had some news about them hiring, they're firing some of their contractors and they're doing a hiring freeze on the company right now. Okay, so that's why you saw some downside pressure here, specifically from yesterday as well. But when we're looking here, I think it's important to kind of keep your composure. And I'm not looking to add unless you're holding above the one hour on top of 290. Once that happens, then I think you're looking for bullish continuation and starting to fill some of the gaps, which you have one at 296 and I believe 309. So I'd be looking at those on the daily time frame as well. Microsoft, great runner up. I still like them. They look very good. And again, I know I just said last but not least, but we have to go to Netflix because there's a lot of questions here. On Twitter, I have mentioned Netflix quite a bit the past few weeks, give or take. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, Netflix is, is dipping today, Tyler, and we're this, we're that. If you've been here for any period of time here on the channel, then you know we've been talking about Netflix basically since $200. And I've been saying that Netflix has probably the best short squeeze, quotation mark, opportunities across the board. You've got that push from last week. Remember, we talked about it, the 228, you push up to 250, you hit targets. It's not a surprise that you got rejected your first time here. Again, NASA got rejected 250, 300 points a day. And Netflix dropped from 250 at highs with pretty minimal volume, I might add, down to 242 on the low end, back up to 243. I'm just saying, with minimal volume on Netflix, you can go look. That's where you moved. And it had bad news with Disney saying they have more subscribers than them now. Look at the big picture, people. If you start to get back up in this range with any amount of volume, shorts will have to start covering and you're going to start seeing crazy movement to the upside. So if you don't want to say that Netflix is down, it's this, it's that, I'm like, people, what are you talking about? People on Discord, they've literally up three, four hundred percent on this play alone on the $300 calls they have. So Definitely don't count Netflix out. I still think it has plenty of room and I wouldn't be panicking on it as well. I still love the market. I still love where we're at and I do see more upside movement. The positions I'm in again, NVIDIA and Target, that is it. The Discord link is down below. Have a good one, traders.